and phase conjugation, or they use more accurate language. That's my thought. I'll try to be excited about this, but I just want to say one last thing. If Vodal had a satellite connection with this CF sensor, yes. doing a spherical rotation in the middle and bouncing back out, and where they crossed, they were standing waves which created the electron. Well, uh, he never knew why they went to the sensor or came out of the sensor. And then nothing comes along and says everything's a black hole. Well, that's, and I really like that model. And in fact, perfect collapse is precisely how I would describe this. So we're very close in that sense. We just tuned up the word scalar and made it more precise by using the word phase conjugate, or which is really the geometry of implosion, which is the core subject of this morning. So that's what so many people get stuck. They have this word scalar or torsional, and other people have the term orgone. And they're stuck in a word that has no definition in physics. And many people who use the word orgone are, like James DeMeo, are totally stubborn <laughs> and unwilling to see that a phase conjugate dielectric is what's called orgone. But yet, electrical engineers can talk about it if you use the right language. And that's one of the reasons why we're here. But I love that language of it. You know, and this is what we animated right here, is that, that geometry of compression of 12 cones to center, which is the 12 cones of this model, which it, I'd, I'd love to compare that to his animation. That's beautiful. And I appreciate that language. Uh -huh. But you see why the, the properly pronounced ohm, you can actually determine by spectrum analysis if you did it right. And you are creating a still point, which is literally an implosion point. But you see the Tibetan multi timbal choir, uh, So that ability to relax and get the phase transition points at the exact correct timing is what determines if you made the precise caduceus to create implosion correctly, to phase conjugate. Could you say that again, quantum? I think it's quantum matter.com. Quantum matter.com. Two M's? Yeah. Let's just see for fun here. No, that's helpful. His name is Wolf, right? Oh, yeah, Milo Wolf. Thank you. No, that's fun. That's very relevant, and I like that model. So he and I could have a fun conversation about his definition of scalar versus my definition of phase conjugation. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see that. I see. Okay. Well, thank you. And it's great that you've been studying this stuff. By the way, Saul here is one of the core, shall we say, activists of the local Byron New Energy Group. And they're doing lots of really cool work on creating nonlinear energy technologies and experimental magnetic motors. And I'm pleased and excited to begin more collaboration with that group. And we're cooking up more fun right here in Byron. And our host here in Byron, Noah, many of you saw his name on our poster. Noah is one of the organizers of Byron New Energy also. So you're and Saul here is actually building an experimental magnetic motor called the Steorn right now, which was the most recent meeting. And we're going to talk a little bit about phase conjugating magnetics and our technology later as we proceed here. So thank you for being here, Saul. Um, the conversation we were having, now remember, we've decided we're going to try to get very focused and understand a core principle here. That's where we're going here. But where we left the, that conversation was we figured out that hydrogen looks like that. And here's the equation. And this agrees nicely with Nassim Haramine that everything's a black hole, especially hydrogen. Another way of saying this is to say that um, in the atomic table, the reason that atoms are able to make gravity is only because their nucleus is fractal to their electrons. And my new equation for hydrogen is part of that proof, as well as Nassim's new equation for the mass of the proton, proving it's a golden ratio black hole. So that gives us new way to understand the work by the chemist Moon, University of Chicago, very famous, who provided rather extensive evidence that the geometry of the nucleus, protons, neutrons, called the hadrons, the way they nest in the nucleus for the whole atomic table was tetra cube octa ecosa. Star tetra cube octa ecosa. So what's the ecosa on the outside? Hello, that is actually the name for this. That's what that is. This is that. And now my proof is that the ratio among them is golden ratio, which is the ratio of dodeci cosa dodeci cosa 3D fractal here. So this is the only possible 3D fractal in my view, 
which is why DNA, Arithmetic, Zodiac, Universe, and Hydrogen are the shape. <laughs> okay. So now that's the geometry of the nucleus. Here are the electrons, SPDF suborbital, 1357 donut pair, 2, 6, 10, 14 electrons. That's the whole atomic table, SPDF. So the S suborbital is a donut, two vortex, very simple. That's the, and this is the physics of what the S suborbital looks like. And by the way, keep this picture in mind, because later in this conversation, I want to explain to you what the shape of the plasma around your head looks like when you have blitz. These are the two hemispheres of your brain. One is centripetal, one is centrifugal. And this is the phase conjugate perpendicular plane. So this is the plasma around your brain when you make golden ratio called ecstasy or bliss. And this explains why the two hemispheres of the brain are doing this. So if you do a walk like this, with this cross crawl, you eliminate dyslexia. Phase conjugation perfected to create this compression point here. So keep this picture in mind. This is the two hemispheres of the brain. This is pointing toward the pineal. And the pineal is over here. The pineal gland. Thank you for the pine cone, sir. <laughs> the, pine, the pineal is right over here between those two hemispheres saying, oh, oh, I think I feel phase conjugation coming. <laughs> and it's lit on fire. And I have felt that many times. That's why I talk fast. <laughs> So the, the SPDF suborbital is a uh, two electron S suborbital donut. Pi suborbital, this is the physics, Patrick Hughes. Three vortex pair, very simple. You take three pairs of donuts, you got yourself a cube. <laughs> and that's called the pi suborbital. And the DNF suborbital, 10 and 14 electrons respectively. Five and seven vortex pair. The five, seven vortex pair are the Anu and Nodeki Kosa. And if you look then at the table in occult chemistry, later justified in today's modern physics by Phillips in England in his book Psi Perception of Quarks, the electron shells look like this. Tetra, cube, octa, Dodeki Kosa, they call the stars and bars. So here's our electron shell, tetra, q, octa, dodeki, Kosa. Okay? So here are the electrons. Tetra, q, octa, ecosa, dodeka. What did the protons look like? Tetra, q, octa, ecosa, dodeka. What's that called? Fractal. What's the new proof? Golden ratio times one equals hydrogen and the atomic table. So this is rather overwhelming evidence that it is that fractality which induces what's called non-destructive charge collapse, implosive attraction of charge, a fractal attractor. And that is the cause of gravity. And I don't mean subjectively. I mean objectively, precise, precisely what Einstein never figured out, why an object falls to the ground, now you know. Now, I want to say more about that to make that sort of this, this is our only moment of fundamental physics here. Did somebody have questions before we?